Hello and welcome to Saints on Cinema. I'm Josh Edlow. And I am Tim And this is the Karate Kid Lance (laughs) joining us again. Thanks for coming, Lance. Thanks for taking my freaking drink on the floor. (laughs) You're pulling with tea. Anyway, so today we are talking about, uh, I'm sorry, Josh, you were introducing us. You can introduce us, not us. We introduced ourselves. You can introduce the show. I'll shut up. Oh, sorry about the blue shirt. I came right from work. I didn't have time to change into my pros, so we're wearing uh, Queech clothes tonight. So go ahead. Some of us are not. But anyhow, um, so tonight we're going to start our detailed reviews of the next uh, episodes in the series three and four of Cobra Kai. These are, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Esquinito? Is that how it's? As you speak Spanish, what is it? The episode? Yeah, the episode was Escondido and I have to read it. I don't know. Oh nice. Because I want to know what it meant. I was actually curious about that. It's Tim wrote a skeletal. So <laughs> I was, sure that's I was writing was. in the dark. Shut up. Escuelito. Escuelito. Yeah, that is a skeletal. <laughs> okay, so a skeleton. It just means skeleton, yeah. All right. Well, isn't that fascinating? <laughs> we took that little detour. Anyway. <laughs> So, the we're, skeleton. so we're talking about episode three. And in Espanol. Espanol. So we're talking about episode three and four. <laughs> and uh, we were. Tres y cuatro. Wow. <laughs> Pretty good. Right? That was like all of Tim's high school like Spanish experience right there. I got a C learning that right there. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> episodes three and four. Uh, these are the episodes that uh, really focus more on some of the younger characters, Miguel and Sam and Robbie. And so we were just going to kind of go over, go through them as well. Don't forget Kai. Kai? Yeah. Is that the name of the the bully? Kyler. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) I swear they call him Kai the whole time. Cobra Kai. I know that. (laughs) Anyway. Or Cobra K. (laughs) Cobra K. Okay, go ahead. So uh, we learn a little bit more about Miguel and Sam in episode three and in their positions. We learn a little bit more about Miguel's family dynamic. We see Sam kind of falling into that alley role a little bit more. And there's a lot of parody, specifically in episode three, some great comedy as well. Um, So Tim first and Lance, you as well. What did you guys think of these episodes in particular? Okay, so here's the thing. So what I liked about episode three um, is this is where you're really seeing um, Johnny kind of honing in on what he's going to be doing to present the Cobra Kai to, it's starting with Miguel, but you see where he started with having him doing chores and teaching him a few basic things or teaching him how to punch at first, where now you're transitioning into that this kid is serious and you're starting to see their relationship actually kind of come together. In the first couple um, scenes where you see Miguel and Johnny, he's you know, give him a hard time about being, a, you know, a millennial, basically. Um, teasing about music and just stuff like that and trying to harden him up and see if he's got the guts to do it, which is why I like how at the end of these episodes, that the whole point was, are you ready to take it to the next step? Where he's getting ready to get him a, a gi, where he's going to teach him how to kick, where he's seeing that Miguel is getting serious. I like that um, Daniel, well, I don't like anything about Daniel, but I like how Johnny is not threatened by the showdown at the end of the second episode where he where he has a little that coy little smile on his face at the end of uh, the little, when when Daniel came into the dojo where that transitioned into these episodes where he's like just all in force even though he's got the the bills coming in <clears throat> um he's still like really excited about what he's going to be doing for these kids and he's seeing a little bit of uh, discipline and, and some backbone in uh, Miguel I really like that. I liked watching their relationship grow. I think that's what these episodes are doing. It kind of, you know, we, we see it escalate later on in the series, but that's the really cool thing about these two episodes is you watch those two come together. Meanwhile, you have all the annoying, everything Daniel's doing is just obnoxious. I don't really care about his family drama. I don't care about his business drama and his, uh, the billboard stuff and all the, the other things that happen in these two episodes. But the, the things focused on Miguel in high school and his interactions with his friends and um, the bullies is you're, you're seeing him kind of stiffen up. You know, there's a couple of scenes where you see that in the locker room during the dance 
um, where they're overhearing the, um, Kai, is it Kyler? I thought it was Kai, whatever. Kai, what? Kyler. 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 So you're watching, you know, Kyler and his his buddies are all bragging about how, uh, you know, how he gave the bra was giving the bracelet to Sam. They're making all these kind of perverted comments. But Miguel and his or his friends are eavesdropping. But then as soon as they knock over the lacrosse rackets or what were they called? Lacrosse sticks and rackets and rackets nets. <laughs> cool. Then they bail, but Miguel just stays there and he listens. And even when he comes around the corner, he still squares up. Why? I went to North Summer. We didn't have no cross. No, we didn't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but we did have karate in town. <laughs> we did. And you went. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so I mean, just him having the, the nerve to stand up. He, he didn't have that same bravery in the first time in the, in the cafeteria when he wanted to go talk to Sam and Miguel was there waving at him. He didn't have that, that uh, courage back then. Just in a few lessons and learn how and punch in the the dummy and everything and just a little bit of remarks from and uh, some of the um, I'd say a little bit of hazing he's getting from Johnny that builds up Miguel and I think it's really cool seeing that because now he's like ready to square up to to um, to Kyler and his friends even though he knows he's about to get into a fight and then all those flashbacks of the training and the punching and everything just come in and then bam the the cool montage that happened at the beginning of those episodes. I think it was a fourth episode. Just kicks in and then bam, he uh no, it was the third episode. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, a little montage where he's kicking the the boards and everything, and he just has that power and then he just does it. Strikes first. He just take he applies the first lesson, but then he he mentions in the next episode when he's trying to beg his mom to let him go back to karate that he just wasn't ready. And he and I think that's the whole thing. And and that's where uh, Johnny's now ready to to hone his skills and kind of discipline him a little more to control this uh these principles that he's trying to maintain that's my favorite thing about what was going on in these episodes so, yeah, so, so oh. i would say you know, we'll, we'll get back to your absolute disdain for daniel in a, in a little bit but one thing i thought that was really interesting and i think i mentioned this in our overall episode as well i found it very interesting that Johnny was using the same techniques that Terry Silver was using in Karate Kid Part 3, specifically with the stand-up boards that were written with, I think it was written legs or knees and then stomach and then face. And because that's the exact same way that Terry Silver was training Daniel. And you're sort of seeing that when Daniel was learning the Cobra Kai way from uh, Terry Silver, he was actually learning real Cobra Kai lessons just in a way, because Terry Silver told uh, Kreese what he was going to do was he was going to make him feel invincible. He's going to make him feel like he could conquer anything. And then he was going to make him suffer and suffer and suffer. So really what he did was teach him the first lessons of the Cobra Kai where you build that yeah, confidence, yeah. but he didn't really go all the way through all the way through all the lessons. And so you can see that as well. When Miguel is in there, he's ready to strike first. He's He feels that same invincibility when he's facing Kyler and all his friends, and he's just not ready, and he gets beat up just like Daniel got beat up when he tried to take take a swipe at Mike Bar bar Barnes in part three. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, that, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, and you saw that where, where Johnny was teaching him, you know, where you, the different places you punch him in the face and neck and, and, the, and the jaw – what it's going to do it's just kind of interesting Sorry, the um the 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 teachings are the anatomy and and what that's going to do as far as damage you never heard any of that from yagi you never heard him describe you know what what the physics are involved in what's going on it's just how to avoid and how then the the focus and on the um the the philosophies of karate versus the actual mechanics of it go ahead yeah so uh, I agree with all that. I thought it was that was really interesting. I think another thing I liked particularly about episode three was there was a lot of great comedic timing in this episode. You know, like um, uh, the the part where he's asking, he's like, "We need to figure out how to get more students." And he goes, "Well, did you think about advertising?" Like, yeah, <laughs> duh, <laughs> right. <laughs> that, was, that was really great. I also loved. Um, the part and how, and the other thing with that, how old school it was. The first, the only thing he knows about advertising is walk around with pieces of paper, and that's not how it's done anymore. And right. then that was that little funny scene where where that's what he was trying to do. And then as soon as he tries to get electronic, he tries to give the the people the website, which is my favorite line in the whole thing. <laughs> www. Period. 
Kodakai, <laughs> period, C O M, all lowercase. <laughs> yeah, that, that was great too. And then I also, I love this. that I can hear like Tim saying the same thing. Like, <laughs> sorry. So the other thing I thought was funny was when he goes to the to the basketball uh, hoop or the basketball court, and he's like, "Hey, you want to pick up those chicks? Kicks, <laughs> chicks dig kicks or something like that. <laughs> kicks get chicks or something." And he goes, and he goes, "Yeah, we could have just gone and talked to him, but maybe karate from a stranger in the park is a better strategy." <laughs> uh, you know, but the thing is, is that was really funny. But at the same time, it showed kind of how stuck he was in the 80s and how out of touch he was and how kind of it made Johnny look a little more pathetic when they were like, nice headband, bro. And he took off the headband and he just looked so defeated. You know, I thought it was interesting. I wonder why he went. If you look, you could see he went back to Encino to do that. So he's from Reseda. The the. Uh, the new Cobra Kai dojo is in Reseda, but he went to Encino to try to get people. I wonder why they did that. Cause they make a very, there's a very specific part, part where he walks through and it shows the Encino sign. So they obviously wanted you to see that he was in Encino and I don't know why they did that. And the only thing I could think of was they probably did that because that's what Johnny knew. All of his friends were from Encino. So maybe he thought that was the, and he also, you, this whole series is about his version of what Cobra Kai was is so much different. And he had to adapt it to the new version of Cobra Kai to millennials, to the people who are getting bullied. This is all about anti-bullying. This whole, the Cobra Kai was yeah, just these episodes too. Yeah. And, and the Cobra Kai, I mean, you remember Miyagi was teaching karate as an anti-bullying campaign. You know, that's what it really was, was teaching him that karate is for defense only to stop the bullies. Cobra Kai was the same way. It's just it's just a different version. It's more offense. It's not defense. It's strike first, strike hard, no mercy. So his he, his version obviously was the type of people he wants to get are these Encino kids who are cool and kind of the the, the cooler kids that maybe were the ones he hung out with when he was younger. Exactly. That's what and I mean. he also the other thing I was thinking as you were asking about that is he you know in the first um, episode where it shows him with all these little maintenance jobs. It, they, he was around all these rich people. It seems, it seems like all of his uh, his jobs were in in Encino, and I think he also recognizes that they have money. They have money that they can afford to go to karate school. I don't think he feels that they would be able to do that in Reseda. Right, that, that, that's a good point as well. Um, so that's because I said it. That's why it's a good point. <clears throat> <laughs> Another thing I thought was interesting, they continue the parody between Johnny and Mr. Miyagi in this. Um, you know, he uses a lot of object lessons just like Miyagi here, particularly at the pool, right? He pushes him in the pool, makes him kick to try to show him that he has the strength in his legs to to carry on. What I love that scene. I love that scene. As, as Lance watched it tonight for the first time, I was just like, I love the music. And I love how it starts with that. It's a little bit of drama. He maybe makes the comments like, it's a lesson, the tension a little bit. He's like, maybe I should have asked him if he knows how to swim. And he's like pulling out, but then he's getting serious. He makes him say, Cobra Kai never dies, dunks him back in. and says, I'm not going to save you this time, and drops him. And then you watch him struggle to get out of it. And then beautifully, it works into the montage, showing him continue to, to, to survive and tread water without any hands where he's, it reflects back to him in the regular karate training where you're seeing this growth as a student. And I think that was really cool. And then it ends with the, you know, the janitor coming in and he's like, do I totally lie? We got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. But I love that scene though. I thought yeah. it, was, it was very obvious what he was about to do. You also but, see that Johnny actually kind of cares for Miguel in that episode because when he puts him down and he's not coming up, he's actually saying, come on, come on, come on. Like he wants yeah. him to get up. And, uh, and so you see that there's actually kind of a mentorship bonding similar to what Mr. Miyagi felt for Daniel between the two of them. Right. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Another thing I found really interesting in that was when he was passing the flyers out. And I love, I love the, the back and forth between Daniel and Johnny uh, in, in the school when he's there at the dance, because um, if you, if you've ever watched any of the, the discussions that Ralph Macchio has had about the original movie. He talks about how there's this scene in the original movie that they cut where Daniel and 
Johnny are in the school and they start talking about whether he ever thought that John Kreese was wrong in the teachings that he was teaching him. And in this uh, episode, they kind of have a very similar meeting in the school. And another thing I found interesting, if you watch, when he's given the flyers, when he's putting the flyers down, you can see that at one point he actually puts a flyer right o- over an anti-bullying flyer. Like there's something that talks about well, anti-bullying. He commented on it. He yeah, I, I, what did he put the flyer over? I could see. Yeah, it. I didn't. Yeah, he noticed that there was a point there, but we couldn't see what the sign, what it was. I thought it was just some advertisement. So the the sign was a sign about anti-bullying and kind of a millennial way of anti of fighting anti-bullying. And he puts the Cobra Kai flyer right over top of it. And so again, just kind of emphasizing that Cobra Kai is all about standing up for yourself and fighting bullying. You know, just really like interesting because you know, when you think about that, the 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 new millennial way of fighting bullying is to have some counselor come in in the cafeteria, as they show in the fourth mm-hmm. episode, to talk about bullying. While she was talking, the the preppy kids are in the back texting all these hate messages and everything, not even paying attention to the lecture about the fat girl and whatever her name. What was her name? I don't remember. I don't want to be a sodium chloride. <laughs> She's <laughs> called salt and pepper, but she was. They were sitting there texting and continuing to harass her. And then the counselor makes mention of Eli with the deformed face, and then um, they all jump. And they're like, "Oh, it's him!" And they're like making fun of him. They're not even getting anything out of this counseling. But then that's the girl. Those are the two kids that end up in Cobra Kai and actually become prominent students in in the tournament. Even there's a great reflection of what's happening where he puts that sign up over the anti bullying that there are other ways to. I'm not going to go into if it's right or wrong with the way, you know, modern society approaches those kind of things with kids. But um, I think that was what's being shown in the, in the, in the series is that what Johnny's trying to do actually does benefit these kids. And as we learn later on in the series, that has good and bad effects. But I think that's, that's brilliant. That's a really interesting uh, uh, thing to show when they do that, because that's exactly what happens with the two that are being talked about right there in that scene in the cafeteria. They're the ones that thrive in Cobra Kai. I also, I also thought it was really interesting that kind of the – there's a reflection of where Daniel is in life with him even being at the party. If you remember, he's at that same Halloween dance as a kid, and when he's at that Halloween dance as a kid, he is trying to not be seen, right? He's in, <laughs> he's in a shower. He comes in. You know, he doesn't want to be seen. But at the same time, when he's there as a parent, he wants to be seen. He wants to be there. He wants everybody to know he's there. In fact, Sam texts him, you're a ghost, right? Like she wants him to be back in that shower, like nobody to see he's there. So I thought that was interesting to see that there's a little difference now at the actual dance. I mean, that's the exact same dance that Daniel fought with the Cobra Kai uh, and, and poured the water on the ho- you know the hose. And there's also a little bit of a parody there with the with the fighting because I saw a lot of similarity in the beatdown that Miguel got to the beatdown that Daniel got. It's right by a fence. Yeah. You know they lock him in. There's four of them. There's one of him. Um, the only difference is is that Johnny gets there too late, whereas Mr. Miyagi got there in time. So right. there's a little bit of a of a parody there as well. You know, I like about that is that whole scene is uh, that one when Daniel sees Miguel come into the the into the well when he walks past him he was already in the room for a while that he actually was haunted when he saw that that costume it wasn't just like oh that's crazy it was like it wasn't reminiscing it was uh, it, that it brought back some of that PTSD which I that's one of one of my favorite things about what Daniel does in the series I'm not not because it's Daniel going through PTSD and it's really watching him struggle but it's really believable that's the only good acting I think. Never mind, Ralph Macho may watch this someday. <laughs> Just saying, it's the only good thing about the character I've enjoyed is watching his dealing with that and um, and the whole balancing that happens a little bit later. But when he sees that costume, just like when he, um, you know, earlier, what, what happened in the first one, in the first episode, where he saw the or the dojo, just seeing the dojo just brought back all those memories and everything. Seeing that that skeleton brought back the the flashbacks of the the skeletons beating him up. And I and I agree with you. I liked like the um, the comparison and how, but, but there was no escape for for Miguel. And it was really funny too that if you notice, Miguel's uh, costume doesn't fit. 
it's a little bit it's like raised up i'd have to go back and watch the original again but it's seen it, it they made it very clear that it wasn't fit for him it was a different costume or that was someone else's costume so it's almost like johnny was a little bit uh smaller than miguel that was that's kind of weird and that shows a lot of between mr miyagi and uh um and johnny johnny in that he gave him a costume just like Mr. Miyagi gave Daniel a costume in the first one. So yeah, there's there that, yeah. So there's there's that as well. Um I think that that also gives you that PTSD that he feels kind of gives you an understanding of why Daniel is so militant about getting rid of Cobra Kai. And that militant that that militance becomes a little overbearing later on in the show. I think things that he says right now to Johnny are very legitimate. You know, the things that he says like strike first no mercy those you think those are good things you think i'm going to let you fill these kids with that that stuff and you see later on in the series that that's actually a legitimate gripe because the kids that that go through cobra kai they end up being a lot more like john crease than they are johnny lawrence yeah and so uh so i thought that was all really great um and so now episode four so this one's called cobra kai never dies this is probably my least favorite episode of the whole series. And here's a couple of reasons why. One, I don't like Robbie's story arc as much as I like everybody else's. I don't, I don't quite know why. Uh, I don't like that. I also don't like how vulgar this episode is. The whole, I can understand that the series is from a different perspective, from kind of an edgier perspective with Johnny. So it's not going to be, like the karate kid i've already kind of told you that i like the karate kid because it's a family friendly show that i could watch all all my kids can watch they all love the karate kid they all want to watch cobra kai this episode in particular makes me feel like maybe i don't want my four-year-old to watch a giant male heart on a on a billboard and all of the cussing that comes in this show and all the references to to male genitalia that happens in this episode specifically. And female genitalia. Where's that? He says pussy. He says quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, he says that which, a bit. Yeah. Which most yeah. people don't take as no, the actual yeah. part. But I know. But it's it, it's a it's a dirtier... It's a cat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. It's a pussy cat. And, and the other thing is, is, I don't really... I'm not really sure what the deal is with Tom Cole and why he's involved i don't understand that it was they had to have a setup for johnny or for uh, daniel to do that amazing kick i don't think i don't think it would be believable for him to do that kick to to johnny because then it would go into a full fight that they're not ready for they had to have someone who could well, you know daniel's certainly not up. ready for it with that for a powder puff kick that's for sure yeah. but but well, but but john i mean he he sort of shows, he sort of establishes how like superficial um, Daniel. Daniel is now. Like his biggest worries are about, you know, getting more business than the other guy. And, he, and the other guy even, what's his name? Uh, Sam, or Cole. Cole. Cole even points out, hey, there's enough, there's enough customers for the whole, you know, for yeah. both of our car companies. And and how passionate he is about his his uh, his um, sales techniques as not being gimmicks. That's and also, he's thing like he's, he's really. That. I mean, everything's appearance for him now. Yeah, he's he's. I mean, he's he's all up in arms because someone you know made the graffitied his billboard and yeah. made him look bad. And it you know, shows. That, how, yeah. That's interesting. That's the same kind of deals that he was dealing with with. Uh, with Mike Barnes in part three, you see a little bit about that too. You know, he's really worried about Mike Barnes messing with him on things, stealing all the, all the bonsais and, uh, you know, putting the flyers everywhere to make him try to sign up for the, for the tournament and all that. And Mr. Miyagi is always kind of the calming influence in that. And here he doesn't have that anymore. I mean, the one thing about the kick, though, that I think in context that I did like about it, if there's anything at all to talk about, <laughs> is um, I saw a lot of similarities in the scene on the beach with Mr. Miyagi. Because you remember Mr. Miyagi and him come back from the beach and there are those two guys at the truck and they're yeah. like making fun of him and making racist comments to Mr. Miyagi. And he does the chop and breaks all the, 
breaks the bottle tops, the bottle, yeah. and then they immediately walk away because they're making fun of him. And at the same time, that's it. Almost it, it, when when I watched it a second time, I saw when Daniel turned around, it almost looked like a light bulb popped up, and that's when he did the kick to knock the bobo. Which I think there was way too much emphasis on the bobo. What the heck? Is that? <laughs> yeah, that what was weird that they kept. He said bobo like five times in that scene. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. So, um, but anyway, back to my original point. I just felt like uh, a lot of the spirit of the original Karate Kid was lost in the vulgarity of this episode. Um, and also, Robbie, he's a conflicted character. I get that. And I guess he's important to the story. But I don't know how I really feel about him yet. Like, I'm pulling for Miguel. I'm pulling for Sam. I don't know if I'm pulling for Robbie. <laughs> I don't really care for Robbie. The only thing I think brings some some um, intrigue into the story is his relationship with Johnny. Because if you think about the Cobra Kai principles, where he keeps trying to to rebuild or reconnect with Robbie, or trying to be some kind of an influence, even in this episode, talk, getting back and talking to his mom about things, he definitely was not striking first and striking hard and no defeat. You know, he had given up on his parenthood with with Robbie in a sense. And I think that's one thing where he's realizing that and he's trying hard to, to do what he can to help his son, you know, straighten up. He's trying to be a better influence that he never was before. I can't see a, a focused uh, Cobra Kai, you know, mentality from Johnny and letting all of this go so far astray where he, in the first episode, he's like, well, you're supposed to call his mom. Yeah, good luck. Just call his mom. I think, uh, I think he's throwing in a little or seeing a little defeat there, which I think is starting to get to him, especially in the scene in this episode where he uh, watches the two, the parents, the, the, the dad and the son in your face there in the diner, which uh, was a little, uh, a <laughs> little too much, <laughs> but, but his, his thinking about that and watching, he's like this, I don't have this. I lost this. And, and I think there is a, a, something that strikes him because of, but when he sees that kind of interaction, he's a good kid. He's a good person. He's a good guy. And I think he wants to be a good dad. And you do see more of that turnaround by the end of the show, but, I think this episode has, and when he goes and talks to his to Robbie at the apartment, he sees like this is he's just wasting his life. Just like you know, he didn't really have a lot of direction when he was his age. Yeah, and I really like that uh, scene between Johnny and Robbie at the apartment. Um, I thought that was a great funny moment where that guy when he says, uh, you know, I can't hear that crap on your boombox, and the guy's like, "What's a boombox?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then I love he goes, what's that thing on your face? And the guy's yeah. like, my mustache? <laughs> that caterpillar mustache. But you know what's interesting is if you watch episodes afterwards, he actually shaves his mustache afterwards. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's so funny. I thought that was great. Um, so, yeah, I get that. And I also loved the – I don't know if I loved it necessarily, but I thought it was very intriguing that Johnny then after that goes and it looks like he's talking to – the mother, Robbie's mom, but he's actually talking to Miguel's mom and kind of saying the things that he wish he could say to Robbie's mom. But it looks, yeah. it's almost like he's a coward and he's doesn't, he's not willing to do it. Um, and I love that line. He says that he's the only person that's never given up on me. I think that's pretty deep and that that's pretty uh, exposing of, of his emotion, his emotional side that he, that's, that's not really in character for Johnny to do. I think that was a, a huge deal for him to say that. And I knew right there, by the way, um, I was like, they're totally going to hook up at some point, or at least have some more, um, some more romantic interest. I was like, it was very obvious and like her reaction to, to Johnny. But yeah, I knew as soon as they, they showed that the first time I watched it, I opened the door. I was like, he's talking to Miguel's parents and he's talking about Miguel. Yeah. Well, it's interesting yeah. that that Spanish lady, when she closes the door and I guess it's the, the, um, his mom's, and or so, yeah. And or something. She says, "A mí me gusta," which in Spanish is like not usually used unless you like someone in like a a romantic way. So that was a little <laughs> weird to me. I was like, no, the other one's supposed to like him. Because the... <laughs> usually, yeah, you say "me cae bien" in Spanish, which is just "I like him," like a normal, like you would like a friend or whatever. So I don't know. Interesting. If that's, that's just because. Spanish is different in that part. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. I'm with you though, Josh. Like I really liked when when that it just shows him at the door. I thought he was talking to his son or or his mo his son's mother. 
But when he's ta- when you find out he's talking to the Spanish lady, and I was like, yeah, that was really well done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the obvious, other thing, but well done. When he says, uh, "They," you know, he's the only one who hasn't given up on me. You're kind of seeing where he's coming from, why he hasn't necessarily progressed. With John Kreese was the only one before that who hadn't really given up on him necessarily, and he gave up on him by trying to kill him. Right. Yeah. So um, from there on, I mean, you could see kind of how his life crumbles after the fact. Because uh, that's, I think, the, the most redeeming quality of episode four is you're getting a lot of insight into Johnny's past post-Karate Kid part one. You're, gonna, you're seeing a lot about where he's been since then. You get to meet his ex, I don't know if his girlfriend or wife. You get to meet his son. So you get to see where they're going. You can see kind of where his life is because that's one of the questions, right? One of the big questions we have coming into this is where's Johnny been and where has Daniel been? And now right. we get insight into where he's been. So um, that's another great uh, part of that. Also, we're, we're seeing a lot more of the, the counterbalance between Cobra Kai and Miyagi Do. It's almost like a, uh, you know, the dark side of the force versus, you know, you're seeing that you're seeing this balance of the force type of thing. Whereas in the Cobra Kai way, you're hearing, uh, we're going to teach you, you don't know any defense and the best defense is more More often. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you watch the karate kid, everything that Mr. Miyagi teaches Daniel at the beginning, wax on, wax off the paint, the paint, the fence, paint the house, Stay on the floor. It's all defensive moves. The first thing you learn is defense in Miyagi-Do Karate. So you can see the differences there. And you can see that Cobra Kai is all about beating up your enemies, whereas Miyagi-Do is about defending yourself against your enemies. It's just two sides of the coin. And there's got to be a balance somewhere in there. You know, I I feel throughout this, this whole series, I keep feeling like there's got to be a middle ground between the two that is the best karate. You know what I mean? It, it can't all be about like Mr. Miyagi at times you, you see Daniel kind of talking to Mr. Miyagi. Like you can't be so passive, right? He says that to him in part three. That's in three. I was going to say passive. three was a little. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that that's so true because it took Mr. Miyagi so long to train Daniel when he obviously was getting seriously beat up by these Cobra Kai guys like Mike Barnes. Um, there's got to be a middle ground there. So, um, I think they both start on the same foot. It's interesting because the first thing, at least in this, I don't think that every student that went to the you know fully operational Cobra Kai dojo first thing they did was chores. But it's interesting. The first lesson that Daniel and Johnny learned was, um, you listen to me with no questions, I and mean, that's what Miyagi said, and that's what Johnny was doing to Miguel. And the first thing they both were doing was chores. And the the interesting contrast was there was no. Uh, there was no purpose in Miguel other than he had stuff that he needed to get done to get the dojo running. But Johnny was, you know, he didn't care how he did this, how he wiped the the glass and everything. Yeah. Don't forget about the best part where it's like, isn't there a special way I should be doing this? It's like, I don't care. I don't don't give a shit. Yeah. 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 But he doesn't, um, but he doesn't, he's not, there's no purpose. There's, it's not a, it's not a technique he's learning. It's just, I need to do this. You got to do this. And, and you said you should be lucky. Sumo wrestlers have to, you know, <laughs> clean their masters. I wonder if that's but, true. <laughs> you know, someone else. But. A couple other things I thought were interesting in this episode, too, was you kind of get a better, a different sense. You know, you're seeing everything from Johnny's perspective in, in this whole series, right? I mean, in one, the first thing you see from Johnny, his first reaction to Daniel is watching uh, the commercial and it looks so cheesy and gimmicky, right? And you're like, oh gosh, that's all gimmicky. But then when you sit there and you talk, when Daniel's talking to the advertising people, he talks about how, no, the karate and the bonsai, those are part of me. Like that's a that's a thing for me. And when you think about that, it's true. The first thing that Mr. Miyagi does to really start bonding with Daniel and his mom is give him a bonsai tree, right? I mean, that's what he does. He has him, he shows him how to trim it and he gives it to him. In Daniel's mind, it's not a gimmick. It's his way of bonding with his customers. And then he realizes that other people are seeing it as a gimmick. And he's like, well, maybe we should change it if that's, if that's what it is. Um, and I said that in one of our reactions to the trailers was like, I think it's annoying that 
Daniel's using this sacred, special uh, family um, connection to these things, these principles, and using it to sell cars. I was like, Yoki would not be happy about that. But yeah. you're right. To him, it's not, it's not what it is. But to him, I mean, and you see in episode, uh, I think it's episode one, where Johnny goes in there, he tries to give him a bonsai tree, right? It's almost like yeah. a, a peace offering to him. And yeah. and Johnny smashes it. So um, they also fill what I, in my mind, was a plot hole. We talked about this in, my, in our overall thing. There's a big plot hole filled here. And my thought from all of this was, how is it possible that these two guys are still dwelling on a karate tournament from when they were eight, 17, 18 years old? <laughs> 34 years later. Well, I also, I, I commented to Tim, like, is, like, it's a little bit too coincidental that all of these people, like, are there only 10 people in the town? Because <laughs> everything that happens happens only to these people that are somehow related or friends or, like, family or... Yeah. Like only those people run into his car and only those people are the ones he gets in a fight with coincidentally. Right. Yeah. So, um, and, but she, they fill that in by saying karate in the Valley in the eighties was like football in Texas. So in this universe, it's a huge deal. I mean, you could see why someone would be dwelling on it similar. I mean, I think we all probably know somebody who peaked in high school. You know what I mean? And they go back to the glory days of when they were on the high school football team and things of that nature. Um, well, also- they, they sort of, they mention it in the movie when, when the one guy, um, the average, the other, other car salesman, whatever his name is, he says, oh. he says, yeah, yeah. I mean, he talks trash about karate. So he's like, Oh, is that, I mean, is that even important or whatever? Yeah. So it's, it's not as big anymore in the town, but it used to right. be. And were you really a champion? I didn't even know you did karate or whatever yeah. he says. And, well, yeah, and you get a sense of that later on when they're in front of the, uh, you know, the tournament board where they're like, yeah, tw- attendance is continuing to dwindle and dwindle. So it's it's not <laughs> becoming as relevant. Um, and another Easter egg. So I don't know if you guys caught this, but I thought this was really cool. When he dumps the backpack, when they have that whole scene in the library where – they push the guy and they grab the backpack and they dump it in the trash. As they're right. walking away, the fat kid says, I think he's going to cry. Right. And that's exactly what either Dutch or Tommy said when they attacked Daniel or they didn't attack him, but they pushed him around before the tournament. And he said, you're dead meat. And as they walked away, I think it was Tommy who said, I think he's going to cry. It was all, So I just thought that was interesting. They throw that same little Easter egg. It just goes to show the detail of how awesomely well this has been done. They, they throw in little Easter eggs that if you don't, if you, if you haven't, if you're not a true fan, there's just special stuff in there that a true fan's going to catch. You know what I mean? Good job, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> you are a true fan. <laughs> well, no, that's what I'm saying. Someone who's seen this a lot and who's a real fan who loves the show, loves the series, they're going to catch little, little things here and there. And that's what makes it so cool. That's why I love the series because these guys are true fanboys. You know what I mean? They love the Karate Kid and they're play, paying homage. They're not those people from Jaden Smith's Karate Kid trying to get Jaden hey, Smith hey, out. Hey. <laughs> that's not that's kung fu. So, <laughs> but you know, it's not any. This is this was strictly done from a perspective of honor for the series, and so I love that. I agree. Last, what are your thoughts? So you just watched the first four episodes tonight for the first time. How have you liked it so far? So at first it came off to me as a little bit, um, well, let me start on a positive note. I think that the acting in this is actually really good from (laughs) both Johnny and from, yeah, like (laughs) I I was surprised. I asked him, I was like, have these guys done any other acting? Like I can't remember seeing him in anything, but I guess that he was in My Cousin Vinny. I didn't know that. And he was in the outside. The The what? That was before. It was before, but he was in The Outsiders. Yeah, so. I mean, they've done other acting. Yeah, anyway. But their acting is good, especially Johnny. It's like he pulls it off well. Has he been in, in, in anything else? He's hot Tub Time Machine. Time. <laughs> he was in Hot Tub Time Machine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. You're okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, the Academy really, really. <laughs> <laughs> they overlooked that one. That one. <laughs> but the other thing is, it's interesting. I mean, I think someone even made a YouTube video about from Johnny's perspective, the beach scene, 
Have you guys seen that yeah. YouTube video? You should Google it or whatever, where it's like showing how like Daniel is actually the, you know, the jerk and yeah. that he was bullying Johnny or whatever. But throughout all of karate, all of the karate kids that I can remember, and I'm not a huge fanboy like Josh, but they, I mean, you always, sometimes there were these moments where you did feel sorry for Johnny. And like at the end of the tournament, when Daniel kicks him in the face, he like congratulates him. Was that the same yeah, tournament? Yeah. He said, he and said, you see right, these like saying. little hints. And like he, he does put up a fight when his, sense, when his sensei is like, you know, kick him in the leg or sweep whatever, the yeah. sweep the leg. He's like, well, that's not, you know. So he has a moral compass. It might be a yeah. little bit off, but at least. And then, so I love how in this series, like, and Johnny was pretty annoying as Karate Kid from time to time. So not Johnny, um, Daniel. Daniel was yeah. pretty annoying as Karate Kid, even the original <laughs> series. There were a couple of times where you're like, this what? kid is. <laughs> <laughs> so I love how they just brought that out. And, and they, I love how they um, do the, you know, Star Wars, the new Star Wars episodes um, seven and eight of, of, they did a really good job of making it appeal to millennials and our generation. Yeah. And this has done, I think, even a better job of that. It feels very like you got the jokes, you got the, you know, maybe it's just us because we're Gen Xers and we <laughs> we're like, yeah, break that kid's inhaler. And, <laughs> yeah, you and your stupid peanut allergies. <laughs> you know? That's one of my favorite lines. Actually, um, when you talk about the swimming pool scene, that is a very like, that's actually very like older generation than us where, you know, how do you teach a dog to swim by throwing them in the water? Right. So I, I feel like that was very, and then, and like you said, you feel, you feel that Johnny really cares because he's like, maybe I should ask him if he could swim, (laughs) you know, and then he jumps in almost immediately to try to save him. But at the same time, he's got that, you know, Gen X or attitude of like, Stop being a, you know, let yes. me say that word again. Yeah. I think I already did. Stop being a pussy, man. <laughs> and uh, so I thought that was good. The thing about the Karate Kid is it's, I mean, there's really, if you think about it, well, let me ask you, Josh, because you're a huge super fan. How much karate is there actually in the Karate Kid? I mean, it's there's not that much. No, there's not. There's a lot of training sequences, but really it's more, I mean, Mr. Miyagi even says, and, and you see this in a later episode, they, they do a, a flashback to it. When Daniel is in the car, when he gives him the car and he's talking about it, he says the, the lesson is about balance and it's not just a lesson about karate. It's a lesson for life. You know, you, if, if you are balanced, if you have balance, then life is okay. And he even says the same thing when he initially, you know, trains him. He says, uh, he goes, are you ready to, are you ready to, uh, to learn karate? And he goes, uh, I guess so. And he goes, okay, okay. That's not, that's not. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you, the karate kid movies are about relationships and about, you know, what's going on and, and there's not a lot of karate. So yeah, I don't think you can get too philosophical about the karate, but I also like, I sort of like, I, I I'm interested to see where this Cobra Kai thing goes, their style, because, um, like I, I've been a martial artist since I was a kid, and um, like I, I, it always annoyed me where where people would come into um, the dojo or into the kung fu center or wherever you're at, and they're like, "Yeah, we're just gonna learn martial arts because it's good. It's a good exercise, or it's and like no, martial arts is to maybe kill people or maybe like you know hurt them or you know I always took it very seriously." Probably too seriously. Um, so, so, so you're so a the Cobra Kai, Kai is what you're saying? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> because, like, to me it was, hey, what is this, the very basic, one of the very basic first moves we learn is, you know, the eye flick. I'm like, what's this for? What's the application of this? It's to poke people's eyes out so they can't see. <laughs> and they're like, no, it's, you, you just need to exercise. And I'm like, no, I don't think that's <laughs> Yeah. And it is true. I mean, the best defense is a great offense, right? That's a Napoleon, I believe. But yeah, it's true. And so I'm interested. I you guys have seen all episodes right now. I haven't, so I'm interested to see like does this end up 
Cobra Kai is the wrong way or not gonna ruin it. <laughs> not on this episode. Yeah. Well, so I like the Marshall side of it, but you know, I think that that's I think that's what your the theme of this whole episode or this whole series really is, is to see that um that Cobra Kai really isn't much it's a different style, but it's it's almost like as I shared before, it's almost the apostate version of Miyagi Do, right? It's it's a, you know, in the movies, you know, Miyagi the Miyagi family created karate, apparently, in this universe. They're the ones who <laughs> created everything. This is a perverted version of it. So it all has some of the same similarities. It's just different and twisted in a way that makes it almost like the dark side of karate. And so... Um, so they do make it out to be wrong at the yeah, end. Not necessarily. It's- well, they make it out to be wrong in the... in. In the Karate Kid, certainly they make it out to be yeah, right. for sure. In the movie, I, I but, could argue but that Johnny though. Johnny does do something that stuck out as that stuck out to me. Stuck out, stuck out to me. Out to <laughs> when he's you know punching the dummy in the face, and he goes down to the throat, and he's like, and that'll really mess up someone's trachea. But I mean, they really only use that. Yeah, doesn't he say something along yeah. the lines of, "Yeah, That's don't do this. That's like that. extreme measure." Yeah, which is like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you learn these moves in Kung Fu and Karate and martial arts and some, you know, they're for different situations. You don't, if someone's bullying you, you don't want to kill them. I mean, Yagi Todd Daniel had to hit someone right in the crotch or from the crouching position. That would, that would kill someone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the other thing, is, you got to remember, Miyagi Todd Daniel in the first movie, because uh, when they're on the boat, he says to him, um, uh, you know, well, you like karate, so you obviously like to fight. He says, is that what you think? And he goes, no. And he says, well, why train? He says, I train so that I don't have to fight, right? And that's what Miyagi says, oh, I've got hope for you. I so, train for, for the exercise. <laughs> no, he, the idea is, is he trains he trains for defense. And in part two, when they go to the Miyagi-Do, he says the same thing. He says, rule number one is karate is for defense only. Rule number two First learn rule number one, right? And then he walks away. So karate for him is for defense only. Cobra Kai is not for that. I mean, it is. It, it, it maybe it is. Maybe it is for that, but it's a different way of dealing with it. So, uh, I like I said, I I'm hoping that the series goes in a certain way. I'm not going to ruin it for you, Lance, because you haven't seen the rest, and I want you to see it before I tell you. And maybe in our last episode, we'll talk about where we hope it all goes. But I think these are good bridge episodes to what we see later. I think it's still going really well. Um, well, and I have I have a comment on the kick because <laughs> I I think that to be honest in martial arts I think that is a more um, practical kick, and I understand how it looks dumb to certain people, but my problem is the, just that the Ralph karate was not in shape to do that kick, and they, yeah, they could have is that what it was? Are yeah, sure? they could have edited it a little better to make it look. You can make someone that doesn't know martial arts or isn't in condition. But, do a nice thing. But that's what I'm saying. It, it was not Hollywood karate where you have the big sweeping obvious motions. Right. And although they did didn't he do a span and then spin. kick? Yeah. So that was sort of lame, but <laughs> I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go in and say that he, the guy's karate now sucks and he's too old to do it. I'm not sure that's that what Macho? happened, but well, he looks great for being his fifties, like I said, but he's not that to be uh, fair, to be fair. The kick was directly on target with the boba. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, after how many takes? Maybe the first takes he was a little better extended. Wait, wait, wait! Name. I would like to point out how many takes did we do, and how accurate was my kick? It was wonderful, <laughs> but you didn't spin. No, so. that's because there's a camera in the way. I know. So. Well, it was funny because I watched it. So, admittedly, this I, I'm on my third time all the way through now, and Chandra, my wife, mentioned watching through it she goes yeah he's really not in he's not in great shape <laughs> they, 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 she, well first of all she said man he was always scrawny but now he's old and scrawny <laughs> and she said she goes she said also uh they they really need to limit his his on-screen karate right now <laughs> well and, and it and i'm hoping also to see like you see that both of their sons are sort of losers, right? One's the bully loser that's dropped out of school doing drugs, but the other one's like the little punk 
only plays video games, you know, is narcissistic and total millennial. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I, I'm interested in seeing how, you know, what, what amazes me is how easy it is to like Johnny and hate LaRusso. Yeah. <laughs> and in his defense, I think that's the way the script is. That's what the story is doing because this is the focus on Johnny. I said before, I think, um, Dan or, um, the first movie is Daniel's story. The second movie is Miyagi's story. The third story, I think, is John Kreese's story. This is Johnny's story. Sorry. Yeah. You John Kreese's story. Yeah. This is Johnny's story. And so the contrast between the two of them, which does go back and forth throughout the rest of the series, is is really engaging. And and, and Daniel, or um, excuse me, Ralph Macho, he does a good job at playing this Daniel, but Daniel was always kind of a hot headed whiny character. And he even says that in the show. So he's not doing bad performance. It's just, it, it's just, they, they wrote him to be a character. You could just be like, Oh, you just need to. <laughs> just relax. Yeah. It's so, just it amazing it's how easily it flowed into like, <laughs> yeah, we never liked, like Daniel. Daniel Russo. Russo. <laughs> he was always kind of, now that you mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing, uh, one more quick thing before we wrap this up. And that is, I'm curious to see where they go with the relationship with Daniel and the son. Because Daniel seems very, very concerned that Sam, and, and we haven't talked very much about Sam's story arc, because you're really starting to see her blossom into this alley character in these episodes specifically. She's liking the, the Kyler, Johnny-esque type bully guy, sees that he's a bully and breaks off with him. Um, you're seeing that. So she's kind of transforming into this alley who doesn't necessarily like the rich kids, you know, that type of person. But Daniel seems so interested in making sure she's not one of those rich kids that he hated, but his son is one of those rich kids that he yeah. hated, you know, and he's really not paying a lot of attention to him uh, in these, in these episodes. I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Why does he, I mean, he cares about his daughter a lot and he's just she's totally a teenager. ignoring his son. She's a teenager. That's, that's where the focus and the drama starts really kicking in. But think about it. I mean, she, so he, he has taught her karate. I mean, he has taught her some stuff. He's been involved with her life. Um, and I think it's an episode four. Is it an episode four where he um, starts making the pancakes for? Yeah. Yeah. So in this episode, he's so focused on her and the son comes in. He's like, oh, pancakes. Like, hey, save some for your sister. And he's like, well, what? I not like pancakes. Like, he came, like, he's like, I want a burrito. And he's like, no, just eat it. No, he, he said, this is not a restaurant. You can't just order whatever you yeah. want. And then the girl comes in and she's like, dad, what happened to pancakes? And he's like, oh, I'll get right on that. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I'm interested to see where they go with that. The, the kid is kind of an ancillary character right now, just kind of a antagonist to, to Daniel a little bit. Um, but at the same time, he's not spending a lot of time with him. I wonder if he's going to end up going kind of a, a I think a he's going to, I think he's going to become a student at Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, there's all sorts of different places that this, that could go as well. And um, you know, there's a lot of ancillary characters that you really care about. And that's what I love about this, that you don't, there's not a character in there that I really, other than I think that my least favorite is Robbie, but I mean, there's nobody there that you just absolutely detest that you don't want to see where they go. You really want to see where everyone's going to go. Even the wife who's just kind of seems to be Daniel's help need and Daniel's, uh, uh, you know, kind of, she's, she's very attractive, but her eyebrows <laughs> ignore the oh, heck out of me. She has like the <laughs> largest <laughs> fake eyebrows. That's just like eyebrows or lashes or lashes. I'm sorry. Eyelashes. Oh. <laughs> her eyelashes are like 10 feet long and they're totally fake. She if she was, would just, she would I, just not. I loved her character from the beginning. And I said, she's going to be the one to, to keep uh, Daniel grounded. Yeah, she, she, she definitely is. She's, she kind of has that Adrian type uh, quality in the show. So that's cool. good. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 before you end, I have to show you a, a, a karate move. Me and Tim are going to fight using our special <laughs> oh. karate move. <laughs> All right, are you done? Yes. That's that's how you. Uh, that's, that's what Lance. I studied his, for thirty years to perfect yeah. that move. His sensei tied his feet and threw him in the pool, and that's what <laughs> Lance learned how to do that. So, so uh, one final thought. Something I watched. Uh, I just recently watched a little uh, interview between uh, Martin Cove and the guy who played Mike Barnes in um, three. 
in part three. And it was really interesting because Mike Barnes talks about movies in the 80s and why he thought The Karate Kid was so relevant now today. He said that he felt like it had a, a, a pull to it that people would pull for the characters. And he mentioned that Karate Kid is a lot like Rocky. And I totally can't. I totally agree. That's all I wanted to say. Rocky and Karate Kid are my favorite <laughs> movies. So I was like, yes, I could be friends with Mike Barnes. Now I hope at some point Mike Barnes comes back into the show. So for that yeah. comment. Yeah, I agree with that. And they do make a lot of Rocky references later. But yeah. anyway, well, great couple episodes. And it's not Josh's favorite episode four, but it has some of so those two episodes. I had, had some really good stuff again and building the relationship between Miguel and, and uh, Johnny. And you're kind of kind of getting a little more introduced on what how um, de- dysfunctional and and out of balance um, Daniel is, and then that starts to be a little uh, directed or sorry, a pro, or uh, um, addressed in the next couple of episodes. So we're going to talk about those next. But do you have anything else you want to share, Lance? No. Do you want to? Okay. <laughs> One more thing. Just because it's my least favorite episode doesn't mean I didn't like it. I'm just saying, out of all of them, it's my least favorite. That's all. All right. Well, thanks for watching. If you guys have any other comments, anything you noticed in these episodes or wanted to say about um, anything we've talked about, then share in the comments below. But definitely share, subscribe, tell us what you think, comment below, and tell us uh, what you liked, what you didn't like about these two, episodes three and four. Right, Josh? (laughs) (laughs) Right. If they All right. missionaries, there'd be that awkward silence. Like, uh, my yeah. Al- <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do believe that. Uh, man, comment yeah, below. Said, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I same also same believe that. I'm grateful for my companion talking about <laughs> subscribing and commenting below. <laughs> uh, All right, well, that does it for Saints on Cinema. I'm Josh Edlow. And I'm Tim Wilde. Thanks again to Lance for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.